How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic eight, acids and bases, volume four, where we talk about the difference between strong and weak acids. Let's go. All right, volume four, what are strong and weak acids and bases? We look at strong versus weak, concentrated versus dilute, and then we talk about conductivity. The understandings and applications focus around this idea of strong and weak acids and bases, and we need to be able to distinguish them based on a couple of their properties. Okay, so the experiments show that different acid solutions of the same concentration do not have the same pH. Some acids are better proton donors than others. Remember the Bronsted-Lowry theory says that acids will donate and bases will receive. And the strength of an acid or a base is its measure to ability of donating or accepting protons. So for example, strong acids such as HCl hydrochloric, nitric HNO3 and H2SO4 sulfuric are all defined as strong acids. The reason for that is they are fully able to donate their protons. So for example, HCl reacts with water to form H3O plus and NO3 minus ions. And every HCl molecule will donate its protons to water to form H3O plus, every one of them. So it's 100% ionized. That means that in a solution, there would be very, very few HCl ions. Well, there won't be any HCl ions. All of the HCl will form H3O plus. So we would see no acid molecules in the solution. All we see is H3O plus ions and Cl minus ions. So HCl is the acid and Cl minus is the conjugate base. So a strong acid is a very good proton donor and has a very weak conjugate base. Cl minus ions do not want to accept a proton and form HCl molecules. The last thing we need to talk about is the conductivity of the solution. So a strong acid contains a large amount of ions in the solution. A, a large amount of ions means the conductivity of the solution, solution will be good. It will be a good conductor of electricity because those ions are free to migrate towards the electrodes. So a strong acid is a good conductor of electricity. A weak acid. Okay, a weak acid is something that does not fully ionize. So for example, ethanoic acid is known to be a weak acid. And really anything with the carboxy functional group or any of those organic acids tend to be weak acids. So a weak acid does not fully ionize in water. And if we have a look at ethanoic acid, when it is added to water, only partially or only some of the ethanoic acid molecules will donate their protons. That means that we need to use what we describe as being equilibrium arrows, the backwards and forward arrows, to show that the reaction is reversible. It forms H3O plus and then the ethanoate ion, which is CH3COOH. So for weak acids, we must show the equilibrium arrows to describe that it's not going to fully ionize. The reaction is not going to go in one way, like it did with a strong acid. So what does this mean? Well, CH3COOH, it does not fully ionize, it will only partially ionize. So that means in a solution, there will be a large amount of, of ethanoic acid molecules. If one of those molecules does ionize, it will form a H3O+, and then it will also form the conjugate base the ethanoate ion, which is a much stronger conjugate base than Cl-, and it will actually like to accept protons. So a weak acid is a poor proton donor, and it has a much stronger conjugate base, which is able to accept protons more readily. So in a solution of ethanoic acid, we have a large amount of acid molecules. They're floating around, they haven't donated their protons. Only very few of them have actually donated their protons, which is why we see very few H3O plus ions in the solution. For example, ethanoic acid, it ionizes to about 
So only about 3% of the molecules actually ionize. So that's what we're talking about in terms of partial ionization. In terms of conductivity, because a weak acid does not form as many ions, it will be a poorer conductor than a strong acid. It will still definitely conduct electricity, but simply because it doesn't have as many ions in the solution, it will have a lower conductivity. And we could measure that by passing the electric current through the solution and measuring that conductivity. Okay, so here we have just a, a large comparison of different types of acids and different types of concentrations. Remember, strong acids completely ionize to form H3O plus ions, and we will see no acid molecules, and we can describe an acid as just being HA, will be found in the solution. Weak acids, they don't fully ionize, and a large number of acid molecules will still be present in the solution. The terms dilute and concentrated refer to the molarity of the acid. So up here, we've got a 5 molar CH3COOH solution. The concentration is high because it has a high molarity, but the type of acid depends upon the CH3COOH. The type is weak. So weak acids, even though they might be concentrated, they will only partially ionize. Strong acids, like 10 molar HCl, that means we have a large amount of solute, a large amount of HCl, and also it will fully ionize. If we're asked to compare two solutions, such as 1 molar ethanoic and 1 molar hydrochloric, we would need to refer to them as being weak and strong. So ethanoic acid is a weak acid, hydrogen hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and then we need to explain what that means. So we can say that Hydrochloric acid would be fully ionized in water and it will have a larger concentration of H plus ions as it is a strong acid and will fully ionize in water. Ethanoic on the acid on the other hand would only partially ionize in the water. Something to remember that if we have the same concentration and the same volume of solution, a thing that would be the same or something that is similar between those two solutions is that they would have the same mole of acid. If we're asked to compare and contrast, we must say both the differences and similarities between the solution. So if the volume is the same, then that means we would have the same number of moles of acid. So the following acids are considered to be strong and you need to know and remember these ones. Sulfuric, nitric, hydrochloric. Weak acids, they don't fully, organ fully ionize in water and some of those or most of those contain carboxylic acids. Section 21 of the data book provides a list of all of the different types of weak acids that you would come across. There are some of the common acids which are shown below, and like in one of the earlier videos, we were asked to identify the proton that would be donated in the reaction. Here, the purple protons are the protons that would be donated in an acid-base reaction. You can see that the ones that contain the carboxy group, it's always the hydrogen that is part of the carboxy group. All right, let's compare the reaction of a strong acid and a weak acid. So imagine we've got 100 mils of two molar weak acid and strong acid, and we wanna react both of those with one gram of calcium carbonate. What do we expect to see? Well, first of all, we have the same number of moles of acid. There's the same concentration and the same volume, so we have the same number of moles of acid molecules in both reactant containers. But because one is strong and one is weak, the stronger acid will have a greater concentration of H+. The weak acid will have a lower concentration of H+. They'll have the same reaction in that calcium carbonate will react with the acids to form carbon dioxide, water, and a salt. But due to the concentration of H+, in the strong acid, it will have a much greater reaction and a much faster reaction rate because the concentration of the ions is simply greater. There'll be more collisions. With the weak acid, because there is less H plus ions in the solution, the reaction will be slower and that is because the concentration is less. There'll be less collisions between the calcium carbonate and the acid ions. 
Moving away from acids now and talking about bases, bases we can apply the same rules. For a strong base, we need to have a base that is good at accepting protons. So for example, the ionic compound sodium hydroxide releases sodium ions and hydroxide ions when it dissociates in water. OH- is a base and it's known as an alkali. So NaOH will dissociate in water to form Na plus ions and OH- ions. OH- ions are a strong base, that means they will fully accept protons. Strong bases are good proton acceptors and they have weak conjugate acids. Weak bases on the other hand, they only partially ionize and they're only able to accept a small proportion of protons. The one that you'll come up against is ammonia and it can act as a weak base by accepting a proton to form the ammonium ion. So for example, ammonia NH3 can react with water to form ammonium, but again because it's a weak base we need to include the equilibrium arrows and it will form NH4 plus and OH minus. Equilibrium arrows must be used when writing equations for weak acids and weak bases. If you don't do that, you'll lose a mark. Okay, volume four, some top tips. Know the definitions, strong, weak. Make sure you write equilibrium arrows when you have a weak acid or base and understand some of the properties. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.